As it's the end of 2020, it's time to review the major events of the year. I will focus on Sino-US relations since this is what I'm good at. Here is a list of things that future historians will mention when looking back at 2020. Firstly, U.S. President Donald Trump was voted out of office. Why was the U.S. election so important? The really important reason is because the Trump administration has wreaked the hell of it on the U.S. relationship with us. Trump started the trade war in order to balance trade relations, about which he understood little, and concerning which Mike Pompeo has created a technology war. This State Department has closed down our consulate in Houston. They kicked out our journalists. They peddled tons of arms to Taiwan. They put our great companies on the entity list, effectively boycotting them. Now they are finally gone, almost sort of. President Trump is still reportedly trying very hard to turn around the election result. Second, the COVID-19 pandemic needs to be mentioned which President Trump has been calling the China virus and the China plague. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? Why do you keep using this? Because it comes from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. But he really screwed up the fight against it. Millions of Americans, including himself, have been infected. And about a third of a million people have died. President Trump has a big grudge against us, as he believes that he would have won this election if not for the pandemic. Well, let's offer our condolences to the American people and wish the incoming President Joe Biden will make a difference. Third, we concluded the first phase trade agreement to end the trade war. Give President Trump credit for accepting this hard-struck bargain by his trade representative Robert Lighthizer, even though it appears that China is lagging behind in meeting its imports commitment due to the pandemic-related supply chain disruptions and depressed commodity prices. This agreement is indeed two years long, so there is still plenty of time for China to make good on what it has signed. And besides, this agreement is not just about China's commitment to purchases. We are feverishly delivering other items in agreement, such as opening up the financial markets, shortening the FDI negative list, and improving intellectual property rights protection, among other things. Moving forward, as we enter 2021, I hope first and foremost that the new vaccines developed in the US will help defeat COVID. In addition, I hope the United States will come back to the Paris Climate Accord the WHO and the WTO, and finally it's time to thaw bilateral relations through dialogue. 